This should be a fairly short video, or at least I'm going to try and keep it short. I have uh, a Nintendo 64 I've been working on. I've modded it recently for RGB, and uh, although the original controller is okay, I guess, a lot of them are a little worn out, and the ergonomics are really funky, like they have a center joystick, which was really weird. Um, the Retro Fighters controller is excellent. It has the ergonomics of a modern controller. The build quality is pretty good, um, although there are some drawbacks. One, there's no built-in rumble, which kind of sucks. It would give this thing a lot better weight and feel because uh, at its stock approach, it's extremely light, like light to the point of cheap. And there was another issue, but I've corrected it. This is the joystick cap for the original controller. It's weird that it's like light gray and then like bone white. So I've already started to mod this a little bit, and before I even took on this mod, I stacked in pennies inside the wings of the controller to give it weight because it, it felt so light. So uh, Retro Fighters, if you're listening, uh, it'd be cool to put Rumble in here. So the first step is to get our Rumble. I actually bought two of these. I've actually taken this one out. This is just a representation. Um, it's really easy to mod a stock rumble pack to run without battery. I'll throw up a graphic, but this is kind of the general idea. You're just going to jump two points on the board that tells the the circuit or this board to run on the power that the controller gets instead of the battery pack. And you can cut off this uh, top portion here. After you've made the jump connection here, you can insert this into a uh, controller just as it is if you have like a regular controller. And the rumble pack will work just fine without batteries. Um, and this is kind of hard to separate from what I remember. You have to press in the uh, shoulder triggers for Z. Give it a little bit of stank, I think. It is not easy. Okay. So top half has uh, two screws to hold in the motherboard or the PCB. Um, as you can see, I have my two uh, penny stacks. I think we can probably fit that in there pretty good. I think there's enough room. Just got to make sure that this uh, oscillating or swinging weight isn't going to run into anything. And I think hot glue alone, as long as you put enough in around it like this has been uh, used, it should be fine. Um, I have some high temp hot glue that does a pretty good job. I need to remove the hot glue that's on here. So I need to bust out the isopropyl alcohol. In case you folks don't know, isopropyl alcohol does a great job of busting loose uh, hot glue. Just lightly work at it a little bit. 
Alright, alright. There we go. Yeah, okay. This is the official Nintendo 64 Rumble. I think that will... Maybe I should put it like that. Alright, so I have the memory, not memory card, this looks like a memory card, this is the uh, Rumble Pack PCB. I have a 3D printed enclosure here using the same two uh, screws from the original uh, Rumble Pack to hold it together. I think this will work. Fits in fine. Eh, the gray is close enough and I think this sticking out will be fine enough for me. I need to run the leads from the PCB in here outside of the cart and have enough that way I can run it to the inside of the controller here. So let's see. Um, but I do, I guess I could leave this on here. And just for the sake of keeping things coordinated, I will snip here. That way I know red is red, black is black. I'll still utilize this um, JST connector. I'll just get some silicone coated wire, I think. This stuff always does really well. Get a fairly liberal amount. And then uh, wire it up. And then I'll come back after I get the leads soldered onto the JST connector and then show how I'm gonna organize it for this. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work, to be honest. Maybe I should have thought about a different way to do this. When this gets plugged in, kind of fitting, I don't know. I'm going to give this a test real quick. I was originally going to route the wires through a little hole that I had near the uh, pins for this rumble pack, but I decided to just drill a hole in my uh, rumble pack shell and then also drill an accompanying hole into the controller. That way when this uh, butts up in there, uh, the wires can run through just fine. Might be a little hard to get it started, but... Okay. Slots in just fine, wires are out of the way so that the, whatever this is, the, the connector for the uh, pins, there's no fouling going on there. In the uh, final design, the 3D print, I'll put a hole in this for the CAD, that way it prints to begin with, that way no one has to drill a hole themselves. You only have to drill a hole near the uh, expansion port for the controller, that way you can run your wires unless you want to run it like I was trying to do, but I don't think I would uh, recommend that personally. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. I just need to make sure that this is gonna fit in here just fine. I think I'm gonna put it like this and cover with hot glue to secure in place. High temp hot glue should do uh, fairly well. And then I need to get the leads soldered in. I think we can give this a test. And I've already wired in this rumble pack and tested it, it works fine. But I want my second one in. And I think I'm gonna have to extend the wires a bit so I can get over to the other side. There we go. I was hoping that these would be long enough as it sits to reach over to the other side, but that's fine. Okay, uh, so what I have here is what I call a junction of wires. I think someone with a little more foresight and planning could have uh, done this a little bit better, but I have them kind of daisy chained together, the rumble motors uh, to the rumble pack. This will work, but it could look a lot better, say if you planned. I need to uh, run hot glue over this motor and secure it in place. And also I'm gonna be probably hot gluing these down to separate them. I don't really want to cover them in captain tape um, because then they'll still freely kind of move around. 
Right, okay, so I have everything uh, hot glued in. Like I said, it's not exactly pretty, but it's gonna do the job. So I don't really care too much about aesthetics on something on the inside of my controller. The next step anyways is to put everything back together, uh, test it out, and see where we're at. Everything is put back together. I just need to give this a test with uh, both motors in here. And then we'll see if this is a job well done or not.